Hello, welcome to Tuesday's TNT. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, we've certainly got plenty of moisture down here in the south. We'll be checking out what's happening in other parts of the country. The latest in the mysterious death of the woman, the Russian woman who fell from a condo in Patia, or was she pushed, and also a very, very large king cobra. How large? We'll find out on today's TNT. Thanks for dropping in and we'll start today by thanking our sponsor Five Star Marine who have been with us for more than a year now. If you are in Phuket, even at this time of the year when we've got a little bit of dampness around, uh, they will be able to organise a really great uh, tour for you. They actually call it the Captain's Choice because on a day like today you mightn't be able to go exactly where you want to go depending on what the weather's doing. So the Captain will decide how to take you to a beautiful beach to avoid the worst of the weather still 30 degrees plus every day so uh, you'll get a great day even at this time of the year there's a link in the description if you'd like to find out more about five star marine and a discount for um tnt viewers now let's get into the latest with the uh, the death of this russian woman an update from the patia news.com patia police reportedly pursuing homicide charges for russian man linked to fatal fall of russian woman now, his face is not blurred in other media, but uh, I'll explain why, or you'll find out why his face is blurred as we go. Patia police are reportedly preparing to charge a Russian man they believe is linked to the fatal fall of his Russian girlfriend on Sunday for homicide after reviewing CCTV footage of the incident, which appears to show the man holding the woman by her legs from his balcony. And upon reviewing the CCTV footage, it was discovered that Ms. Daria reportedly was dangling beyond the edge of the balcony with her 30-year-old Russian boyfriend holding both of her legs. And police stated the boyfriend then allegedly released his grip, causing the woman to plummet to her immediate demise. He noted, however, that the motivation behind the footage remains unclear, whether it was an attempt to rescue the woman from falling or an act of homicide. And during his interrogation, the Russian man acted uncooperatively. His initial statement conflicted with the CCTV footage. When confronted with that footage, uh, which appeared to invalidate his claim of not being present, he became more irritable and uncooperative. Uh, the police colonel revealed that he initially detained him under charges of disorderly conduct while intoxicated and the Jomtien police uh, were requesting an arrest warrant with the Patia Provincial Court for Homicide. Now, going to the Daily Mail, and I understand the Daily Mail is a bit of a rag tabloid in the UK, but it does have a few more facts for us to try and piece this together. And it says Russian tourist girlfriend drops to her death after dangling upside down from 7th floor hotel window in Thailand before boyfriend is arrested at the scene. Nothing like putting the entire story in the headline. And horrifying footage shows Daria, 32, dangling from the window at the Seven Seas Condo Resort in the tourist hotspot of Patia City. And uh, Daria was seen falling headfirst, her hands flailing as she plummeted to her death. The 32-year-old was found by security guards naked from the waist down and lying face down in a pool of blood outside the hotel. The superintendent in the Jomtiem district of the city said an initial examination on the dead woman found no signs of physical abuse on her body. The boyfriend's in custody. He had an interpreter and we're waiting for the results of the post-mortem examination. Now, there's a quite an amazing photo, really, for lots of different reasons. Uh, I've voluntarily blanked out his face because, as we'll find out uh, in the next story, he's out on bail. He's not charged with anything. Uh, so it's appropriate to blank out his face. Quite a dramatic photo there. Big boy compared to the Thai police around him. Of course, they're doing the uh, obligatory pointing. But uh, the PatiaMail.com updated the story saying that the provincial court denies arrest warrant for Russian man present at falling death of Russian woman for insufficient evidence. And the courts denied an arrest warrant for the Russian man described as a person of interest in the falling death of a Russian woman in Jomtiem on Sunday morning. As a result, he will be at least temporarily released. And uh, the man tested negative for any illegal drugs, denied murdering or harming Daria. 
uh, stating that she jumped of her own will before he could stop her, despite his attempts to do so as seen on CCTV. He also claimed scratch marks and injuries on his body were self-harm, not caused by any physical altercation with Daria. The man also stated his uncooperative and aggressive behaviour at the scene of the crime was due to shock and not due to wanting to fight police or law enforcement. And as a result of the Patia Provincial Court denying an arrest warrant on lack of hard evidence of homicide, Fedor will be released but monitored by immigration as the investigation continues. I think that's going to prove to be quite a complex case, so we will follow that through. Uh, Now, just uh, going to weather now, going to the Bangkok Post and this story, drought limits electricity imports. Whilst uh, there's been plenty of rain in parts of Thailand, it looks like in some of the areas beyond Thailand's border where the a lot of the hydroelectricity is generated, well, they're having drought. So it's a feast or famine, and of course, that's all very well having lots of rain, but unless it falls in the catchments, it doesn't really do much good. But uh, let's read a little bit more on this. It says the renewable power supply in Thailand could be affected by drought as the country imports electricity generated by hydropower from Laos which has reduced water volume in its rivers. This according to EGAT. If the drought becomes more severe, hydropower plants in Laos will generate less electricity, resulting in reduced imports. And EGAT signed an agreement with Laos to buy 10,500 megawatts of electricity up from 9,000 megawatts under a plan to promote greater use of renewable energy. But CK Power earlier issued a report on the impact of El Nino-induced drought on Laos. It says we're monitoring either the drought in the region and preparing measures to ensure an adequate electricity supply for the country. And electricity generated by hydropower plants is part of Thailand's campaign to combat carbon dioxide emissions generated by the use of fossil fuels in the country. The authority announced earlier this year it started operation of its 10th mini hydropower plant in the northern province of Uttaradit. Now, these are fascinating projects, and we'll check them out in greater detail in just a moment. Something I didn't really understand was uh, quite as big as it is. And EGAT plans to push ahead with 15 floating solar farm projects over the next 15 years. And EGAT's first floating solar farm is at the Sirindorn Dam in Ubon Ratchatani. This solar farm commenced operation in 2021. What do these look like? How big are they? Well, there you go. They're absolutely huge. So that's um, lots and lots and lots. I don't know, maybe thousands or tens of thousands of solar panels all floating on a dam. And uh, that's a bit more of a close-up. You can see all the individual solar panels there. Uh, So generating lots of electricity. Uh, Another close-up there. So they're calling it a giant solar farm. This one is 250 acres, making it one of the largest floating solar farms in the world. This information from the dronegirl.com. The floating solar farm consists of seven sections floating on buoys, or buoys if you're from the US, that together are the size of about 70 soccer fields. So as you can see, absolutely enormous amount of uh, solar panels there, all floating. I'm not sure why it's better or more economical or more efficient to have them floating on the water than sitting on the land. Thailand currently generates 12% of its energy from hydropower and renewable sources. The government set a goal to increase that up to 27% by 2037. From that, 6% of the country's total power could come from floating solar farms. Well, uh, whilst the sun's out, I suppose they're going to be operating at full efficiency. I'm not sure how efficient they are when uh, there's cloud around, but fascinating to see how many they're going to build of these and the size of these operations. Uh, This isn't helping. The nation, Thailand, reporting southwest monsoon to bring heavy rain nationwide. The southwest monsoon is intensifying, covering the Andaman Sea and the Gulf of Thailand, and causing heavy rainfall across 60 to 80% of Thailand. This is according to the TMD. Let's just check some of the weather around the place. Uh, weather seems to be the topic. And uh, this from Phuket. And you can see there we've got uh, some plenty of rain, up to, well, 83% uh, chance of rain 
uh, as this afternoon goes and it's going to continue through to Sunday. Uh, checking the rain in Bangkok and it looks like they're going to have a little bit of rain later today but generally overcast but fine conditions for the rest of the week. Up in Chiang Mai, the far north of Thailand, looks like they've got a bit of rain today, uh, perhaps around lunchtime and then just overcast for the rest of the week and to the northeast of Thailand to Konkan and could be some rain uh, later this afternoon but generally overcast without a lot of rain so it looks like it's the uh, southern part of Thailand that's being hammered at the moment. It wasn't particularly heavy rain yesterday but uh, it was quite persistent and it looks like that's going to continue for well at least the rest of this week. You're watching TNT. Thanks for dropping in to Tim Newton today as we check the main stories from around Thailand and the region. Uh, often people ask me, what is the one thing or the things that you miss most from where you used to live? Well, living back in Melbourne, we used to have a very vibrant uh, theatre scene. In fact, I'd go to the theatre or stage shows probably once a week. There was always a great show or some great comedy or uh, some music or a concert on at least every week. Now, the only time I've really been able to experience good quality sort of Western theatre here in Thailand was when they had Phantom of the Opera come and visit oh, it's probably about 10 years ago now. So I went along thinking, oh, I need a bit of, uh, you know, Western theatre every now and then. And I thought it would be a bit sort of dumbed down and uh, maybe it would be in Thai. Maybe there'd be a backing track, but no, there was a full orchestra, a full West, uh, West End cast. And in fact, they were touring around the world with this cast and the whole show, the orchestra. They did have Thai subtitles on screens on the side, but a top-notch performance. So glad to report that uh, there's a bit more theatre coming if you're sort of into a bit of a Western theatre fix. And uh, an upcoming event as part of the Bangkok International Festival of Dance and Music, a West Side Story which was probably one of the most, uh, not my favourite, but certainly one of the most important musicals from the 20th century. And it's going to be performed on um, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. This is just a screen capture of the Friday. So the 5th, 6th and 7th of October at the Thailand Cultural Centre. But they've also got uh, Swan Lake. Uh, they've got Carmen. They've got uh, Aida. So some top-notch Western theatre coming to Bangkok if you'd like to get your, your fix. I'll certainly be going to a few of those. Uh, that's not really news and I wasn't paid to say that. I just thought I'd mention it out of interest for those people that uh, do like a little bit of Western entertainment from time to time. Now going to our next story, a Thailand dengue update and first monkeypox death. This from Outbreak News Today. Always a fabulous read. And the story says the number of dengue fever cases this year could reach a three-year high. And Thailand's witnessed a staggering, it says, rise in dengue fever cases this year, with nearly 60,000 cases reported up to August the 5th. Data from the Bureau of Epidemiology shows most cases of dengue fever have been reported in Nan province, followed by Trat, Chumpon, Chantaburi and Tak, and 10 provinces have been categorised as high-risk dengue transmission zones, namely Tak, Patum Thani, Samut Prakan, Bangkok, Chantaburi, Trat Phuket, Songkla, Naretawat and Satun. 49 deaths have been reported from dengue fever to date. So certainly something to be aware of. Uh, when it comes to mosquitoes, haven't had a bad bout of mosquitoes this year where I live. Uh, they do fog the area maybe about once a month. So uh, just be aware of trying to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes because it might be one of those striped mosquitoes and you could get quite sick. And the BangkokPost.com reporting the first monkeypox fatality in Thailand. And Thailand's first fatality related to monkeypox occurred last week. A 34-year-old Thai man who already had HIV and syphilis according to health authorities. And the Director General of the Department of Disease Control said yesterday that a patient had suffered a fever, headache, itching and a rash on his body back on July the 3rd. He sought treatment at a private hospital in Chombri province on July the 11th. Tests on samples taken from him confirmed he had monkeypox, HIV and syphilis. 
And on August the 9th, the man suffered fatigue and breathing difficulty. Relatives took him to an infectious diseases institute in Nonterbury. By then he had monkeypox-related rash all over his body, large areas of dead tissue on his nose and neck, infections to his limbs, lungs and brain, and severe immunodeficiency. Now, he received monkeypox medication and antibiotics, but his condition deteriorated and the man died on the night of August the 11th. And Dr. Torres said monkeypox was an emerging infectious disease in Thailand. Uh, as of August the 8th, there had been 189 cases, consisting of 161 Thais and 28 foreigners. And he said the disease was spreading. Most cases were among men who had sex with other men, and 43% of all cases also had HIV. So it looks like the monkeypox is very opportunistic, taking advantage of people with uh, suppressed immunodeficiency. Moving on to our next story today, and there's nothing like a big snake to grab our attention. Villagers discover five-metre king cobra near Seaside Home. And uh, there it is. That is one big snake. Apparently a king cobra. Uh, sort of, to me, I would have thought that looks like a python, but... Um, I'm not really ever going to get close enough to tell the difference. And let's face it, they don't wear name tags. But that is one very, very long, thick and, uh, well, scary snake. Uh, in a rare coastal encounter, villagers stumbled upon a colossal five-metre king cobra entangled near their residence. And the astonishing snake, weighing around 47 kilograms, had sought refuge beneath a palm tree. Rescuers from a rescue centre in Krabi, Thailand, swiftly intervened upon receiving reports from residents of Tambon Talin Chan. And this story, by the way, is from Sanuk, translated for ASEANtoday.com. And the villagers were captivated by this unprecedented sighting, as the region is not known for hosting such serpents due to its proximity by the sea. Glad to read that five metre snakes are not uh, common by the sea. And according to Ms. Tim, 59, who initially discovered the reptile, the unexpected encounter left her in awe. Would leave me shitting my pants. A local authorities confirmed that this king cobra is a rarity in the area where ordinary cobras are typically found. Well, that doesn't make me feel any better at all. And a plan's now underway to release the serpent deep into the forest where it can thrive undisturbed. Well, let me say at five metres, I don't think it has much thriving left. Uh, that is a very, very big snake. And um, I certainly wouldn't quite know what to do if I encountered something like that. But it's part of the reality of living in Thailand. Uh, living in Australia, uh, where we do have snakes, so some very poisonous snakes... I don't think uh, in some 50 years there I actually ever saw one. Here in Thailand, I have seen uh, a quite a few snakes. And uh, just here in the garden, just small green tree snakes. And uh, the cats usually uh, have fun with those. But nothing much bigger than that. Uh, but I am aware that from time to time I might run into a larger snake. And, uh, well, we'll just... Brace ourselves for when that happens. I'm not really a bit, bit like Indiana Jones. I, I don't do snakes. I thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with some of the things happening around Thailand. In the meantime, hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Please subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.